Okay. There we go. Man, that that was that was less than stellar. But nevertheless, let's go ahead and try that again. Let me put this up there. All right. Let's go back. All right. Let's go back to this slide. All right. Well, you were watching the slide. Now let's go back and uh, say it so you can actually hear it. I have no idea why it wasn't on there, but uh, I went back and reset it, and so there I am. So hang on just one second. And let's see here. Okay, so we're going to start with power. <laughs> wow, I was on a roll there too, man. I had I had it going down. So these are the words. Here's what I'm. Here's what I was saying when you couldn't uh, hear me. Is these these words on the screen? You can read them. You've seen them there for about ten minutes now. These are the words that I want you to utilize as you uh, evaluate your marketing. These become these become some of the evaluation words. So I want you to write these down. I want you to make a note of these and I want you to evaluate as you go through and look at the marketing that you're writing against these words. Now, I've got to remember what uh, you did not hear versus what you did hear. Basically, you heard nothing. So we've got three concepts, power, precision, and passion. I'm going to break them down individually. We're going to talk about power. We're going to talk about passion. We're going to talk about precision. And that's a little bit confusing because then you start thinking, well, do I need to be powerful or precise or passionate or all three or some combination of those things? And uh, the idea, obviously, is to be a combination of those things, but I'm going to break it down on a one-concept-by-one-concept one concept basis, and then I'm going to kind of pull them back together and show you some examples of power talk, okay? So write these words down. These become your evaluations. I'll give you a similar set of words for passion and a similar set of words for precision, and I want you to write all of these down. So I'll give you just a couple minutes, jot them down, and these become the evaluations as you are writing your marketing because it's easy to say, well, power, precision, passion, but if I give you these additional words like the currently that are currently on your screen, and uh, I'll read them one more time just to make sure that anybody who's simply listening but not actually watching the webinar gets them, influential, compelling, aggressive, strong, controlling, forceful, potent, inexorable, commanding, persuasive, intense, sway. We want to make sure that this is the feeling that is coming through. Now, not every single thing you write all the time needs to have massive power or passion or precision, but we definitely want to start where? With our with our three Ps. In our headlines, and then as we get into our subheadlines, as we get into the text and the copy, there does not necessarily need to be a high level of power. You can't beat people over the head every single second with every single sentence, but <laughs> we do want to make sure that we are talking strong. So uh, keep that in mind. Specificity, which is under precision, is going to be uh, highly important even as we get into the text part of writing marketing pieces and ads. So let's move on from where we were uh, when the sound started, and let's go to the next uh, thing here. Okay, the psychology of power, and this is where I was at. I was telling you that people want to be told what to do. This is why power is so important. I want you to think about this. Evaluate this in your mind. And do you think that this is really true? Do people want to be told what to do? Well, I mean, it kind of depends in the situation and the context. But as it relates to them buying stuff, and particularly stuff that you sell, do they want to be told what to do? And the answer is they very often do because why? Because they don't know. If they did know, they would just go down and buy it. They wouldn't even talk to you or go to your website or anything. They would just call you and order it. But people don't know because of the law of 9,344. We've got so many things going on in our lives that we've got to rely on external sources to help us decide, help us decipher. Remember, marketing's main job, numero uno jabo, is facilitate the decision-making process. And we want to do that in a powerful way because here's why. People want to be told what to do. I believe this to be a true statement. Think about times when you've bought something uh, in your personal life. Forget about what you sell for just a minute and think about times when you've bought stuff. You want to find somebody that has an opinion that will tell you what to do because you don't know. And the more you believe that they know what they're talking about, the more likely you are to do what they say. And then the price issues and all these other issues that surround, well, will they buy or not buy, they tend to go away. This is why owners of companies 
tend to be so uh, effective at selling, talking about small businesses, because the owners typically have the power that comes from the confidence, and people want to be told what to do. So we'll get to confidence in a minute. People are looking for a lighthouse in the dark. They're looking for an authority. They're, they want a credible opinion and suggestion. That's your job is to create a credible opinion and suggestion and tell people what to flip and do. They want to be told. Next, let's talk about this principle called rip off your shirt and put up your dukes. And let's talk about why power is so important. And this is a goofy example. I've used it a couple times on some other webinars. But just uh, kind of stick with me on this. Imagine a kid who has a, a dad who's in the military and he moves around a lot. <laughs> and he's on his seventh school in six years kind of a thing. And he's just in the sixth grade. They move pretty much every year, and he's kind of getting sick of it, and he gets picked on, and he's the new kid, and he's not super, you know, uh, imposing physically or anything particularly unusual about him, but uh, he just tends to get picked on, and so he, he comes up with a, a strategy, and the strategy is I'm going to get really, really tough so that when people pick on me, I can just kick their butt. So he uh, goes to his new school in fifth grade, and uh, the kids on the playground start picking on him, and he immediately – uh, starts into a fight and he gets into a fight and uh, he starts to prove himself. Well, the next time he moves, he comes up with a better strategy because he doesn't want to actually have to fight because fighting hurts. So what he does is he goes out onto the playground. He's got kids kind of picking on him. He says, okay, here's what I want everybody to do. He gather around. I want to talk to you guys. They gather around. They're ready to kick his butt. And he then sort of shifts gears and gets sort of this wild look in his eyes. He rips his shirt off, like in the old-timey movie, just rips it off, throws it on the ground, puts up his dukes, and says, okay, I'll take any of you guys on. Only request no more than two guys at a time because that's not fair. I can't beat up more than two of you. Let's go. Who's first? And they look at him, and they go, whoa, who is this kid? This kid's part crazy. And he's put this demonstration of power on. He hasn't actually fought. He hasn't actually done it, but he's put the demonstration of power on, and people start to look at him and say, whoa, maybe we should get him over on our side, and he doesn't even actually have to fight. Instant respect, instant credibility. Now, does he need to be able to back it up? Of course. What if somebody takes him up on it? How many kids does he have to fight? Even if he loses, he at least still has that respect because he's been tough. Now, in your business, obviously, we're not picking fights. And we're not beating people up. That's not the point. The point is to put a display of power through your words, the way you talk, what you say, so that people look at you and say, whoa, whoa, hang on a second here. This is different. This is unusual. This is credible. This is not something we've seen before. That's what the demonstration of power is going to be. So here's kind of the uh, visual image to help you see this. I think this is from uh, Bull Durham, and all the guys are, uh, you know, giving him a hard time, so he just rips his shirt off and says, okay, let's go, all right? So when you speak with power, you've seen this before, when you speak with power, people believe you are powerful. This is true. When you speak with power, people are drawn to you. When you speak with power, your character and competency are not questioned, and when you speak with power, you stand out from the crowd. How many people are speaking with power? Answer, not very many, not very many. So it's an easy way to stand out from the crowd. Now. Like in the schoolyard brawl scenario, you'd sure as heck better be able to back up if people take a little bit closer look. And in business, we definitely want to be able to back it up. But here's what you don't want to do. You don't want to be able to back it up but don't have anybody pay any attention to you because they don't believe that you're powerful in the first place. The easiest thing to do is to, to, to sort of drift back into the crowd and to sort of become part of the background landscape because people, that's what they typically do, okay? So let's, let's learn to be a little bit more powerful. Let's talk about precision now. The next concept, and here's some words. Just like I gave you some words for uh, power, I'm going to give you some words for precision. And I want you to write these down. These become your um, evaluation. Exactness, accurate, correctness, perfect, meticulous, rigor, Careful, attention, definite, particular, sure, and strict. These are just some words to look at and to think about. When you write something, say to yourself, is it accurate? Is it exact? Is it correct? Is it perfect? Is it meticulous? Is it rigorous? Careful, attention, 
And this, of course, is the opposite of the platitude, right? So as we look at the psychology of precision, you can probably guess we're going to talk about platitudes. And people have a platitude filter that uh, they utilize psych, psych, subconsciously without even thinking about it. Now let's talk about the concept of blink for just a minute here. The concept of blink comes from Malcolm Gladwell, the author. He wrote a book called Blink. And the premise of the book called Blink says – that people will make extraordinarily important decisions with a very astonishingly low amount of information. In other words, they will take all of their previous experience and they will instantaneously, hence blink, in a split second they will impose all of their previous experience and exposure to a situation to determine instantaneously, again, the concept of blink, how to react and how to respond and what to do in any given situation, okay? That's how we work as human beings. Now, we don't always do every single thing we ever do on the concept of blink, but you'd be surprised how frequently it comes into play. So here's what happens. You get a brochure, and uh, I think I have this brochure. Let me see if I can find that thing. No, I don't have it handy. You get a brochure from a company, and it has what I call Charlie Brown's mother talk. Wah, 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 wah. And it says things like we've been in business since 1431 B.C. And all of these platitudes, you guys know platitudes. I know you do because you've been around for a while. And you hear all these platitudes, and when people detect that there are platitudes in that brochure or on that website or in that advertisement or in that marketing piece, now remember this, platitudes can be powerful, passionate, precise things, but if they're not communicated properly, that's when you start to lose the power. That's when you start to lose the precision. That's when you start to lose your audience. So we've got to find a way to say things with a more precise, passionate, powerful, okay, hence this whole call. But precision is really where we can start to overcome the platitudes, when we start to be specific, when we start to say things in an exact, accurate, rigorous, strict type of way, to use some of the words from the previous slide. So when your brain sees that there are platitudes, it automatically, immediately says, oh, well, there must not be anything very worthwhile in here, and it knows to just skip everything. Platitude filter. On the other hand, if it sees something that is a little bit more exact, then it tends to say, well, wait a second. Hang on a second. I'm going to show you something here. I hadn't planned on showing this to you, but, you know, it's an audible. I can call an audible, I think. You guys okay with me calling an audible? Let me call an audible here. I want to show you a couple stuffs. Oh, where's the stuffs I want to show you? Okay, here's a couple stuffs. All right, where is this stuff? Here it is. Okay, this is a client we have right now. It's a company called Fantasy Tan. Fantasy Tan is a company that sells spray tanning equipment and solutions to the tanning industry. Okay? It's not a tanning salon. It's the company that manufactures the equipment and sells the solutions that the salons would then use on their customers. Now, here's what you need to know about this in just very brief terms. They do things that are so far superior to everybody else in their industry that it's a no-brainer that they should be killing their competition, but they're not. And the reason is because they use too many platitudes and pretty pictures and things that don't really communicate what they do different and how they're different. But I want to show you this. Uh, as it relates to, well, I'll just show you a couple things here. Let me get the first page on the screen here. I don't know where is that sucker. Well, here's what we'll do. We'll go over here to equipment. Yeah, they're coming. Here they come. I'm just now pulling them up. Okay, here we go. I had to find them here. All right, now let me figure out a way to make these a little bit bigger. Okay. All right, now this is a mock-up. This isn't the final thing, but this is the mock-up for the uh, uh, equipment page for Fantasy Tan. Now, we've got a little bit of manipulation to do still to make this look exactly the way we want, but let's take a look at it. It says, Fantasy's tanned equipment is seven times quieter, runs six times cooler, lasts five times longer, 
uses half the solution, the nozzle weighs one-third as much, and only creates one-tenth the overspray, yet actually costs less than other brands and gives your customers a tan so precise and realistic that it makes other machines look like they're using a dull crayon. Okay, so that's a little bit wordy. Let's go down here. We started with one question. How can we make the best spray tanning equipment in the world? And then we got some uh, question marks there. Obviously, this is a, uh, a mock-up, okay? They started with an entirely different question. How can we make the equipment as cheaply as possible? When spray tanning was invented nearly 30 years ago, it created an exciting opportunity that spawned an industry, but also created a major problem. Then it goes through and it tells what the problem is. And it gives some uh, ideas. Now, let me go to some of these pages. No, uh, size and weight. Well, how much does your equipment weigh? If you've ever rolled a medium-sized suitcase to the airport, then, you're or then you already know the minimal effort required to tote our equipment. Anyone can easily transport our equipment between salons. No muscles required. And then it shows uh, some videos, and then it talks about noise and heat. Do you really want your technician spending eight straight hours listening to a gar garbage disposal or freight train? That's exactly what you get when you buy vacuum motor-based spray tanning equipment from our competitors. Most people don't know it, but 80 decibels, our competitor's equipment, is actually 10 times louder than 40 decibels, Fantasy Tan's equipment. Now, here's what I want you to know about this. Interestingly enough, I'm going to go back to the presentation over here, get rid of that thing. People have a platitude filter. Here's what happens when we write stuff like this. When the client reviewed this, their very first comment was, wow, that's a lot of stuff on there. I don't know if people are going to read all of that. And so they started passing it around to different people, salon owners, employees, different people in the industry, and everybody came back and said this. Man, that's a lot of stuff. I don't know if everybody's going to read all that because it's different when, than what they expect from a spray tanning company's website. What they expect is a bunch of pretty pictures of people getting tans and so forth. And we took a, a different approach, an MYM approach, to say, no, here's exactly what you, what you should expect. Now, here's the interesting thing. When people started reading that, here's what they said. Once I got into it and I read how much? A few paragraphs, I found myself sucked into it, and I found myself reading every single page. Why? Because of the power, precision, and passion, here's what people do. It's the opposite of the platitude filter. The platitude filter looks at the writing, looks at the marketing, looks at the headline, looks at the text, looks at the page, and says, wait a second, there's nothing worthwhile here, let's skip it. On the other hand, that same platitude filter looks at something that is done properly and says, wait a second, this is different, this is good, this is worthwhile, and it, what, sucks the reader into it. So. You don't need to be worried about, well, will people read all this stuff? Because they will read all this stuff if you write it with power, precision, passion. The platitude filter, the precision, the precision is what's really going to make the difference in people saying this is credible. Okay? The concept of blink, let's keep moving here. Platitudes are instantly, instantly subconsciously sniffed out. And here's what we want to do. We want to say something different, unexpected, something sticky. Something different, unexpected something sticky so that the platitude filter is overridden and people will read it. Lie in generalities, tell the truth with specifics. Think about the necessity of specifics in a court case. If you were in a court case and you said, hey, uh, you know, OJ wasn't there, he couldn't have done that, they're going to want to know. The attorney, the, the uh, judge, the, the jury, they're going to want to know, well, where was he specifically? Who was he with? Where, when did he leave? What time did he get there? Does he have any proof? Was there any credit card receipts? Did somebody take a picture? and so forth. Specificity is highly important in building credibility. It's too easy to get caught lying when you commit to specifics. So people know if you have specifics in your marketing, they're going to know immediately via the concept of blink that you're not lying because people don't lie in specificity. You don't say I left at 6.17 p.m. if you left at 6 o'clock. You just don't. Why would you do that? Well, I left at 6.17, and it was actually 5.30. No, that's not how people work. So specificity is going to enhance credibility by getting people to believe what they see. And people believe what they see, not what they hear. So we want to make sure we commit this to writing. Put it in black and white. Let's move on and talk about passion. Here's a list of words for you. These become your evaluations. Fervor, zeal, enthusiasm, stirring, excited, energetic, conviction, emotional, affection, eager, intense, spirit, 
these are all words that describe the word passion. Passion. So jot these down. I'll leave them on the screen for just a minute. Passion. Fervor, zeal, enthusiasm, stirring, excited, energetic. When you write something, ask yourself, does it have enthusiasm? Is there conviction? Is there emotion? I'm going to let you write those down while I go grab something because I've got to grab this because it's going to make my point. Let me grab this. Okay, I think it's in this thing right here. There it is. This is a brochure that I got from Kathy at training yesterday. It's been in MYM live training this whole week. Thank you for those of you who attended. It was a good session. And uh, she handed me a brochure. It's a, it's a brochure for a remodeling company. It's kind of a standard brochure. And uh, I want to read you the, the back, okay? Here's what the back says. Our mission to enhance your quality of life, give you back your time, and free you from concerns in updating your valuable property. Is there any passion? Is there fervor, zeal, enthusiasm, stirring, excited, energetic, eager, affection, emotional, conviction, spirit? Do those words describe what I just read? Listen to this. Five reasons to call Lone Star Property Solutions. And then the first reason says convenience. Saves you time and money with one phone call for complete range of remodeling and repair solutions. Now, you say, well, that's just kind of what we do. Yeah, but I want to communicate with power, precision, and passion. Is there power, precision, and passion in that fervor, zeal, enthusiasm, stirring, excited, energetic, timely communication, quick response, working quickly and efficiently, keeping you updated on progress? The answer is, of course, no. And we could go on, but we don't want to because it's too boring. The opposite of passion is what? Boring, okay? Believe those, people believe those who seem to really believe what they're saying. What convinces is conviction. This is the Lyndon B. Johnson quote. You've heard me say it a thousand times. I want you to commit it to memory. I've got to commit it to memory. Commit this to memory. What convinces is conviction. Believe in the argument you're advancing. If you don't, you're as good as dead. The other person will sense that something isn't there and no chain of reasoning, no matter how logical or elegant or brilliant, will win your case for you. What convinces is conviction. Conviction. Passion. What convinces is passion. What convinces is conviction. Belief. Belief. Have passion in the argument that you're advancing. If you don't, the other person well, since something isn't there, what's not there? There's no passion. There's no life. There's no spirit. There's no fervor. There's no zeal in these words. There's no emotion in these words. And then no, no chain of reasoning, chain of reasoning, no matter how logical or elegant or brilliant, will win your case for you. Okay? It's got to be there, as Will Smith would say, it's got to be coming from right down here in this region as he points to his chest. Okay? That's what passion is all about. So let's take a look. You've seen this list from me before, the principles of uh, power, precision, and passion. And I'll put them all on the screen. We're going to talk about each of them individually today, okay? Specifics, absolutes, telling the story, have a strong opinion, tell it like it is, don't mince words, plain English, elevating the attitude. And what I'm going to do is just go through each of these in a, in a little bit of detail, and I'm going to show you a couple examples of, them, of each of them, and uh, we'll see what you think, okay? So let's start with being specific. Specificity, let's take a look at some examples. This is a banner at a home show for a remodeling company, and we're trying to talk about the concept of I'm available anytime. Now, if you say I'm always available, I'm, I'm available anytime. If you say that in your marketing, well, that's not very power, precise, or passionate. If I say feel free to, do, to, to call me anytime, day or night, that's a little bit better. But let's get a little bit more specific. Ruin my vacation, interrupt my dinner, wake me up at 2 a.m. My only concern is that your job is 100% perfect. Here's my cell number. This is actually a banner at a home show. Ruin my vacation, specificity, interrupt my dinner. Now, there's also, you're going to see that many, many of these power, word, passion, precise concepts, they collide, and there's multiple of them in, in most of these examples. We got a high level of specificity. We also have a high level of what I call power words. The word ruin is very powerful. The word interrupt is very powerful. Wake me up. These are all very powerful, but they're also extraordinarily precise. Let's look at another example. This is something off of a website for uh, one of our clients. Why we win the price wars. Okay, we've, we've got lower prices. That's the premise of this uh, particular company's um, this particular company's uh, identity. 
they've got lower prices. And this is a little sidebar on the website that says why we win the price wars. And then we get very specific. No advertising. Most window companies spend $1,000, yes, $1,000 plus in advertising to find a single new customer. We don't do any to advertising at all. None. Our business comes, our business all comes from past customers, referrals, or this website. Thank you. Why we win the price wars? Well, we're cheaper is what people would want to say. We've got the lowest prices, people would want to say. We have volume pricing. Well, well, okay, what does that mean? Volume seller. We sell two to ten, that should say ten times more windows than the average window company. This allows us to spread our overhead over more jobs and charge you less. I wrote something very similar. Let me pull this out. I don't have it on the screen, but I can read it to you. It's right here in my hand. Come on. What if I said something like this? How we have the lowest prices in Michigan, even though we sell the highest quality products. Highest volume seller. We sell over 50 jobs every single day, more than 1,200 a month. Our prices from our suppliers are far less than all of our competitors. This is just a simple fact. Also, it allows us to spread our overhead over more jobs and charge you less. Okay, Just a different version of the same thing. Well, what else? Lowest overhead. Well, lots of people could say we have low overhead. Well, what do you mean you have low overhead? Let's be specific. We own the building our showroom is in outright, which saves us about $4,000 a month. We run a lean operation with no waste and no frills. You save. Now, if they say that they have low overhead, does this tend to be more believable, credible, trustworthy than just saying we have low overhead? Yes. Next, accountable employees. Next, we like to win. Let's face it, it's easier to sell less expensive windows. We close more sales at lower prices, which gives us more volume. We like winning sales and getting new customers. Result, 20 to 40% less. Look at how specific this is relative to what you would typically normally expect to see people say, which is we're lower, we're cheaper, we've got better prices. This is more specific. Okay, this is uh, also on a, on a website for upscale remodeling. From age nine, my dad taught me when it comes to remodeling, only absolute unqualified perfection will do. Now we've got some other concepts going on here. We've got the concept of tell the story. We've got the concept of uh, of uh, power words, absolute unqualified per perfection, and using absolutes. So we've got a lot of things going on here, but I like the level of specificity. The story becomes believable because we use specificity. It's not just uh, since I was a kid, it's from age nine. Well, why is nine better than when I was a kid? It's sticky. It's like it has a place to land in the brain. Okay, let's move on to oh another example. Specificity, how much should you pay for a good replacement window? And then we tell them, is it $189? Is it $1,200? And then we tell them why it's a $525 window. Specificity, $189. Advertised price per window. $59 to remove the old one, $79 to install the new one, $29 for materials, $356 final price, and that's for a crummy window. If you enjoy the bait and switch, call the $189 window, guys, and that's an ad that has a huge level of specificity that helps people understand why the $189 window is any good. Here's what people would normally say, well, you don't want $189 windows because they're low quality. Well, let's be more specific. That's what we're attempting to do here. Let's move on to absolutes, the second principle. And let's take a look at an example. Incognito custom websites. The, the main header says there's a reason over 4,300 families have trusted Incognito since 1994. But I like this next sentence. I think it's such a fabulous absolute type of a statement. We always insist on doing every job exactly right. Always insist every exactly. We do Every, we do jobs right. We've taken we do jobs right and we've increased that power to we always insist on doing every job exactly right. Is there a level of precision involved here? Do you feel the passion, zeal, fervor, enthusiasm, spirit of that? Then we get into extremely specifics. Well, what do you mean you always insist on doing every job exactly right? Well, no flimsy power word, hardware, drawer glides or hinges, ever precision, absolute. No cheap fiberboard or cheesy laminates, high level of uh, power words. 
every project custom measured, constructed, and installed. No fast prefab kits with clumsy fit. Okay, absolutes. Next, energy swing windows. Every once in a while, you find that one company that literally does everything right. <laughs> this is kind of an absolute literally does everything right. We sweat every single detail on every single project to ensure a 100% perfect job every single time, start to finish and beyond, no exceptions. That seems fairly absolute to me. We sweat every single detail on every single project to ensure a 100% perfect job every single time, start to finish. Can you see this, this kid ripping his shirt off in the schoolyard and saying, okay, let's go. Take, let's take it. Come on. Bring it on, buddy. How we beat the pants off of every other window company in Pittsburgh. This is called absolute. This is called power talk. Is there a level of precision? Well, how often do you do things right? Well, you know, when we feel like it. No, every single detail, every single project, every single time. No exceptions. 100% perfect power, passion, precision. By the way, look over here on the right. Satisfaction tracker updated every Friday, and we get into extreme levels of detail, specifics on how we keep uh, customers happy. I don't want to look at that in too much detail right now, but let's move on to the next one, telling the story. Okay, this is James Markey. I'm not going to, this is the same one where the We Win the Price Wars comes from. I'm not going to just tell you we have superior products at reasonable prices. I'm going to show you exactly how we do it. The best windows money can buy for $50 to $250 less than anyone else. Kitchen and bath remodeling with 40% less markups. Ow, just hit my elbow. Other con other, others cut corners to offer lower prices. We use a combination of high volume sales, no advertising, and really low overhead. And then he goes on to tell that story. This is called telling the story. All right? How about this? We convinced the insurance company to triple their offer. If you flip this postcard over, you will then see a story about how they did it. And I'll show you another example of the same thing in just a second. This is the About Us page from uh, Weber Remodeling. I dropped out of college, took a beating in the framing industry, and learned a $372,000 lesson in doing the right thing. We need to underline doing the right thing there and put a period after it. We need to update that a little bit. But here's the point. Is it telling the story? Yeah, and if you read this story, you will see that this guy, Jason Weber, did exactly what this story uh, headline would suggest. This is telling the story. Are there power words in there? Dropped out of college, took a beating in the framing industry. How much was the lesson? $372,000. Was it $300,000? No, it was three hundred and seventy-two. What was the real amount in the real story? Oh, three hundred and seventy-two. This is powerful. This is precise. This is passionate. Okay, here's a postcard for a commercial roofing company. Fire department hose. The insurance company's original offer was $1,600. We got them $600,000. The insurance company's second offer was $120. We fought for more. Leaks were so bad, we were... <laughs> I can't read. Leaks were so bad, firefighters were sleeping with plastic over their beds. Another impossible roofing dilemma. A case study in 291... South Gulf Coast Fire Department. It's true, insurance companies are non-discriminating cheapskates. When the South Coast, Gulf Coast Fire Department was experiencing significant roof leaks, the insurance company rushed in and offered $1,600 to cover the repairs. We took a look at the roof and knew it needed to be replaced and fought the insurance company on the fire department's behalf. The insurance company then sent a check for $120,000. By signing the check, the contract would have become binding. Instead, we took the check and shoved it back in their faces and demanded, based on evidence, that they pay the full amount needed to do the job right. A $600,000 settlement was agreed on, and now the firefighters are dry. This is called telling the story. Okay? Let's move on to having a strong opinion. Having a strong opinion. And this is uh, Shant's Home Improvement, and the headline says, Flawless which is a power word, my methodical, thoroughly thorough, borderline OCD processes and procedures will ensure your project is flawless every time. Before I started this company in 2000, I was a CPA for 17 years. My personality and my training only allow me to do things one way, the right way. Okay, 
we've got a strong opinion going on here. And then we talk about the methodical way on the right, and then we talk about you know other ways uh, underneath that, but you can't see it because I cut it off. Let's look at another strong opinion. Your insurance company wants to minimize your roof damage claim. This is the same uh, company, just a different look. We don't care if you don't get enough money to fix your roof right. As long as you can't prove damages, we can short pay you all we want. Your insurance company, having an opinion. Look at what we've been able to get for our clients. Let us fight for your rights. Our opinion is that you are going to be screwed by the insurance company. It's said in a very powerful way. Let's go on to this one. These are kind of uh, similar concepts. Tell it like it is. Don't mince words. Why on earth would you pay a $1,200 for a $525 window? You wouldn't unless you get cornered by a fast-talking salesman. And I'm telling people exactly what to expect. It's powerful. Look at, the ten, look at the language there. Why on earth would you pay $1,200 for a $525 window? Tell it like it is. No arm twisting, two and a half hour sales meetings, no compliance techniques, no uncomfortable silence, no hard closes, no regrets. This is called telling it like it is. This is what you can expect. How to not, not to get all religious on you, but that golden rule thing really does apply to sales. I've taken high pressure and high prices out of the replacement window business. 13 years ago, I got so sick of the window business, I finally quit. We're telling the story. We're being precise. We're being passionate. We're being specific. All of these things. Okay. Now, let's talk about plain English. The plain English approach to business writing is a book that I've recommended to you multiple times. If you don't have it yet, go get it. It's called The Plain English Approach to Business Writing by Edward P. Bailey. Let's talk just very briefly about using plain English. There is a common misconception when it comes to writing that is professional in nature that a person must write in a verbose manner to come across as intelligent. Let's try again. People often make a mistake in thinking that writing long-winded sentences with big words makes them appear smart or stated different. You don't need to write a lot, of, write a lot or use big words to sound smart. Now, we've got three different versions. By the way, that is uh, from Danny Rubin from lifehacker.com. You might want to check that out wrote an article on this topic that was very uh, interesting. But here's the point. We've got to write in, in uh, plain English. Look at this top one. There's a common misconception when it comes to writing, and people start to lose and lose interest, and they start to lose their uh, attention, and they start to roll their eyes back in their head. You don't need to write a lot or use big words to sound smart. It's very to the point. Plain English is powerful. It's precise, and it's more passionate. Okay, move to the next one, which is elevating the attitude. You've seen this ad before probably. Kitchen remodeling, If you're anxious, are you anxious to get the job done or are you anxious to get the job done right? We take a little longer. We cost a little more, but wait until you see the final product. We've got a face that would suggest that we're serious. And my favorite headline <laughs> in all of remodeling, I could honestly care less if you have a list of three remodelers who are cheaper than me. Has the attitude been elevated? Uh-huh. Oh, that's the same one. Sorry about that. How about this attitude being elevated? If you want the usual conservative kitchen remodeling job, absolutely do not call us. We only do unbelievable. Jaws may drop. Neighbors may be envious. People may talk. Is the attitude elevated? Absolutely do not call us. In other words, screw off if you don't want, you know, what we do. Ordinary, everyday, tame, tired, mundane, same old, same old kitchens bore us to tears. We specialize in pizzazz. Okay, we've got several things going on here. We've got exactness and specificity. We've got power words. And we've got, what are we talking about now? We're talking about uh, elevating the attitude. Okay, let's talk about consumer advocate. This is another way to integrate power. $13,000. For replacement windows, the guy looks surprised. Replacement windows shouldn't cost more than a new car. If you're in the market for replacement windows, be careful. We're walking around to the other side of the table. We're putting our arm around the consumer, and we're saying, I've got your back. Let me help you out here. Consumer advocate is very, very powerful because it takes you out of being the adversary, and it puts you on their team. Most window companies send their salespeople to week-long sales boot camps. You don't even stand a chance. Who is this coming from? Well, it's coming from a window company. I'm on your side. Our sales training principle is simple. 
we treat people with respect. We've been to those boot camps too. They are brutal. Consumer advocate, how much should you pay for a good replacement window? $199, $1,200? The right answer is $399 installed. Maybe it's $499, maybe it's $525. It doesn't matter to me. Here's what you need to know about window pricing. Now, being matter of fact, this is a, a early a mock-up. So, Christopher, if you're on this webinar and you're looking at this, uh, we're still going to make this headline a little bit easier to read, but th the concepts are pretty good. Welsh construction was started in 1961 where people were honest, folks followed through, and a man's word was his bond. For us, nothing has changed. It's a matter of fact. We don't cut corners. We have a firm no-pressure sales policy in writing. Our markup is less than half of most of our competitors. If you want stress-free, total peace of mind remodeling, you've come to the right place. Okay, This is called matter of fact. Matter of fact, we finished over 4,400 basements and baths since 1999, more than anyone else in the country. We're faster. We use better products. Our installers are more experienced, and surprisingly, we're actually less expensive. Oh, by the way, you don't pay, we don't play pricing games. We don't use big, phony discounts, and everything we sell comes with a lifetime warranty. This is called matter of fact. Now, look at this. If I just said we're faster, that's a platitude. If I just said we use better products, that's a platitude. If I just say our installers are more experienced, that's a platitude. But look what happens when I stack these. We finished over 4,400 basements, more than anyone else in the country. That is a power statement. We're faster. We use better products. Our installers are more experienced, and surprisingly, we're less expensive. This is powerful powerful, passionate, precise, because we've stacked these up, okay? And as you read into the text, you see that there's something to be said for that, okay? Power words. How to make your 40,000 dream kitchen into a $57,000 disaster. Disaster. It's a power word. Step one, hire a contractor. I'm not saying all constructors, contractors are losers. I'm just saying there's a reason they have a bad reputation. Our last BBB complaint was never. Power word. 18 years in business, 650 bathrooms completed, zero BBB complaints. High level precision, power, authority, et cetera. All right, so let's move on to how to write with power, precision, and passion. I've been showing you a lot of examples. I'm gonna strongly encourage you to use the MYM methodology. Put yourself in John Smith's shoes. Give your, get yourself in his emotional state. Use the headline writing methods, John Smith headlines, headline starters specifically, headline bank is also helpful. Use the MYM methodology. If you don't, I, I don't understand that. Why wouldn't you do that? Tune into the Tuesday morning ad clinics. Here's what you frequently see me doing on the Tuesday morning ad clinics, writing things that are fine-tuning the power, precision, and passion. If you want to get good at this stuff, tune into the TMAC. Listen to the insider call, same thing. Find a marketing partner, somebody that you can bounce ideas off, something that you, somebody that you can say, hey, I've written this, what do you think? Take the list of words that I've given you earlier for power and passion and precision. I gave you 12 words each times three, 36 words that you can use to evaluate and have somebody else look at them and evaluate. Sometimes it's hard to see yourself. And then submit your stuff for staff reviews, okay? That's kind of what I have for you today. I'm going to open it up now. If anybody has any questions, I'd be happy to take any questions or comments on this topic. All you have to do is raise your hand and uh, I will unmute you. Or you can type in a question into the question box. Okay, I've got Mimi with a hand up. Do you have a question or is that uh, from before? Uh, must be from before. Okay, nice to talk to you. And let's see here. Okay, Stephanie, you have a question, but that's from before. The audio is cut off. Okay, I think everybody's got the audio problem solved. Now, has anybody got any other questions? Anyone? Anyone at all? we got a lot of people in here. Everybody is telling me we have no audio. How long do you expect to have no audio? The answer is for the entire <laughs> webinar. Okay. Uh, here you know. Okay. okay, any questions about this topic? Anyone? Carrie, good to see you on here. Chase, good to see you. Got a few new people. Jim, good to have you on here. We've used some power, precision, and passion with you. Paul, Rich, Stephanie, good to have you on here. Hopefully you were able to get on, Terry. Everybody that's participating, appreciate you being here. I guess we'll go ahead and end up 
And uh, we'll post this call a little bit later on if you want to have access to the slides and see uh, those lists again. They'll be available. So uh, we'll talk to you then. Thanks so much for participating. We'll talk to you later. Uh, next week, in fact, I think we have a Tuesday morning ad clinic. Let's just double check. Um, the 18th, yeah, Tuesday morning ad clinic. So we'll talk to you then.